I'm back after the holidays with the Creality Nebula Pad, and I have some exciting news for everyone who picked one of these up. This process isn't without some caveats though, and if you're looking for a truly plug and play experience, this isn't it. But don't get discouraged. Make sure your nebula is as set up as you can get it, and let's get into actually making it work. The day after I posted my video absolutely dogging on the nebula pad, I received a message on Reddit. A user named Destinal told me that they have a pre-rooted image for the nebula pad that wasn't quite ready for public release. If it is public when you're watching this video, it'll be linked in the description. This image will not only default the root SSH password to Creality, but it will help with installing Fluid and Mainsail. If you aren't familiar with these terms, don't worry, I wasn't either. Thanks to the aptly named YouTube channel 3D Print SOS, the installation process was a breeze. If you're familiar with installing prompt-based software, this shouldn't be too tricky. We're going to summarize it a bit in this video, but for the real guide, head over to their channel, which is linked in the description. I copied the pre-rooted image to a USB drive and inserted it into the Nebula Pad, powered it on, and was met with a screen asking if I wanted to upgrade. Sure enough, it did, and then it rebooted. Nothing was different, all the software was the same, and it's still linked to the Creality Cloud. But there was one huge change. The SSH password for root access had been changed from something unknown to something known. I fired up Putty, a fantastic free SSH client for Windows. Using the IP address from the Nebula Pad as the target on a default port, it opened up a window asking me to log in. I'll want to log in as root for the user and Creality for the password. It's important for me to mention no characters will appear on screen while typing the password. Press enter. Once you see the colorful root at nebula on screen, you're in. It's time to install the goodies this image included. Start by typing dot slash installer dot sh and press enter. I'll put that up on screen here. Now we're in the main installation menu. For some reason, mine was already installed when I tried to do so. But type 1 and enter to go to a very user-friendly list of installable programs. You'll want to do all of the ones listed as essential, and the ones listed under camera. You'll need to do this one by one by selecting their corresponding numbers on the left. Once that's all done, it's time to get things fired up. With your favorite web browser, navigate to your Nebula's IP address, and open port 4408. You can do this by adding a colon to the end of the address, followed by the port number. This will bring up Fluid, a very user-friendly interface for printing. I should probably point out that you're pretty much done using the Nebula Pad as an interface. Not once have I needed to interact with the screen since installing this. Fluid also has a really nice built-in file editor for configuration files, which is what we'll need to set up in order to make our printer actually print. Each printer will have a different configuration file, my best advice is to search online for a configuration file that matches your printer's hardware, and then you can use that as a base for fine-tuning your machine. If you happen to have an Ender 3 V2 with a 4.2.2 board, a Sprite Extruder Pro, and a CR Touch, I've shared my printer configuration file on my website. Oh right, I have a website now. That's kinda neat. Link in the description. You can also navigate to port 4409, which contains Mainsail, an alternative interface to Fluid. I'm sure each one of these user interfaces has its benefits, maybe even different features, but frankly I don't know enough about either to speak on them in any further depth. They do have some pretty neat features built in, like a G-code viewer that follows along with your printer, and time-lapse features that can make videos like the clips at the start of this video. Once I had my printer configured with the proper E-steps, Z-offset, and other basics, I was set. I went to my slicer, changed from 60 mm per second max speed to 200 mm per second max speed, upped hot end temperature by about 10 degrees, then exported a model. In Fluid, I uploaded and started the print, and this thing absolutely flies. It is a somewhat scary experience at first. The printer moves strikingly fast and with purpose, it is both violent and graceful all at once. It shakes, even with the vibration dampeners, it is able to rattle my entire metal and wood desk, but it doesn't stutter. It prints, and it prints well. Even at these insane speeds, the quality was either on par or superior to my regular printing. And that's about all I have to say about the Nebula Pad for now. If anyone would be interested in a more in-depth installation or want to know more about Clipper, I'm happy to include them in future videos. Just let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.